I want to just introduce myself. My name is Matt. I work here at Green School since a bit more than three years. I am the Director of Admissions and Communications. Um, and um, I'm here still with Sal. And Sal, we almost coordinated our shirts today. I don't know if it's uh, yeah, We don't a have a staff uniform, but Mads and I are both wearing very blue at the Green School. Yeah. 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 Just and like our, um, our heart of school, where we are located currently, is getting... Um, at least a bit more quiet now. It's coming towards 4 p.m. here in Bali and uh, our students are off from the regular program and transitioning into some of the after-school activities here on campus. We have volleyball, basketball and soccer going on. And just when you were watching the video, we had a wonderful sight of some of our younger students just going past the screens here into our mud pit where mud wrestling is one of the more popular things for our primary kids to do after school. It's uh, messy and very recommendable. Um, <laughs> but we'll increase your laundry uh, and detergent consumption, we have to say. Um, just in general. Yeah, not just, in, just, just in general. Just being at green school, yeah. yeah. So... Um, Sal and I are joined here today in our little Green School panel by uh, two other persons, Nikki and Freddie. So Nikki is a, a Green School parent with us for about a year now uh, with two sons in high school. And Freddie is a, a recent graduate here from, from our high school. He graduated this summer. And uh, both Nikki and Freddie are going to talk to us about our high school program, uh, life at Green School, and of course, what it feels like transitioning here. So that's actually where I want to start, uh, Nikki, and by asking you, um, joining Green School a bit more than a year ago, just rewinding to those conversations back at home before you decided to, to take the big jump and, and uh, come to Bali. What, what, was the, what was the conversations about at the dining table, at your family, uh, at those evenings where you, you were thinking about Green School? Thank you, Mad. So, um, hello, wherever you are in the world. We're really happy to be here and share our green, green school experiences with my two sons uh, who are in years 11 and 12. So how did it start? We had friends who attended green school. They were much younger and it really sparked um, a seed of curiosity in our family as to would it be possible to do this? Actually, is it just for young children? And actually, no, what we thought about is that our, our children were at a crossroads as to they were looking at their two year high school program. And so I was sitting just before COVID was over, where you are today, attending the virtual open days. My sons then attended those as well. And then we had some really interesting conversations because it is, is very, very different. And what the boys were finding is that they had to make some options in terms of their subjects, not just the core subjects, but um, you know, what is really what they want to do? Do they really know themselves? Um, well enough to make those decisions or are they just following the path as expected from them so yes it, it really was an interesting time my husband was fully on board actually very early on so that was great and so we actually came to Bali we had a look around the campus really important to do your research talk to as many people as you can when you're on campus as well and um, attend these open days because it's a marvelous opportunity to ask those questions and then yes we made that decision because we felt that uh, our, our sons really weren't finding out who they were as an individual what they were passionate about and um, so hence yeah we're here now yeah so onboarding green school and 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 coming here and transitioning into the jungle, a new environment for the whole family and obviously for the boys in terms of the learning. How, how did that feel? What was the experience when you when you came here the first weeks and months? Oh, it was fantastic, actually. It was such an adventure. Um, we'd been in international school prior to that in Asia. And so Green School makes it so easy. The transition, the community really wraps their arms around you um, and makes the transition very smooth. It, it's fr from across every learning neighborhood, neighborhood, you feel very welcomed. Um, from the admissions to speaking to past students, to actually landing on Bali in Bali. The parent community is incredibly supportive as well and active. There's great networking and sharing. And I think that's what makes Green School so special as well. It inspires uh, learning, but it, it really inspires collaboration and that power of community. It's absolutely incredible. And I've never experienced it anywhere in the world. 
So okay. yes, thanks, tremendous. Thanks, a lot for, thanks yes. for sharing, Nikki. So um, I wanted to also bring you into the conversation, Freddie. Uh, mm -hmm. You graduated grade 12 uh, this mm -hmm. summer and have been with our high school program for three years. Could you speak a little to your journey into the green school community and into our high school program? Yeah. So. Um, so I, I came in October 2020 during COVID. Uh, I was supposed to land here in August, but that was impossible because everyone was in quarantine. Um, I first found out about Green School in 2019, visiting Bali on vacation and visited uh, in person. And I was kind of skeptical going into, going into the tour. I remember thinking some bamboo jungle in the school, that's kind of weird. I'm not sure I really want to go here. Uh, but after two sort of hours on campus, I was completely convinced. And so it didn't take me long to convince my parents to move across the world to go to green school uh, and get my sister and I enrolled. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it was a great experience uh, coming here during COVID. Even then, when everything was sort of on the low and many students had gone back to their countries because COVID felt dangerous and scary. Um, it was the same sort of experience that Nikki had coming in. It's like everyone's super welcoming. Um, making friends is super easy. Um, lots of after school activities. It was, yeah, it was good, good coming in like that. Who are you, Freddie? Come on, fill us in. Who are you really? Come on, tell us the whole story. <laughs> Who am I really? Uh, have um, you not sort of seen a similarity? <laughs> Freddie's not related to yeah, me, we, but he is related to one person here today yeah. with us. Yeah, so I'm a big green school advocate. Uh, <laughs> it's not because I'm paid by it. Uh, for it by my dad, who is also the guy in the blue shirt. Yeah, not um, it's that, just, blue shirt. <laughs> it's yeah. just because I really like green school. Uh, and it's true, I really do. Otherwise I wouldn't be sticking around still. Uh, so I graduated and now I'm, I'm running a, a, an eco startup and deferred uni to run this eco startup. Um, and these are the kinds of unique opportunities you get at green school, mm -hmm. you know, installing, you know, one of the projects we're doing with my startup is installing half a million water filters in the next five years in collaboration with other small startups. Um, and those kinds of impact projects and being featured in big media outlets, you don't really get to do those kinds of passion projects in other schools. And so that was also one of the big selling points and one of the big reasons I really wanted to come here. Thanks, Ray. So this is something I want to speak a little bit to. Now you've spoken about your journey into green school, some of the reasons and thinking of coming here and what you were looking for. So. Um, Nikki, being here now since about a year and having the boys exploring the green school options, uh, what what are the differences that you feel in terms of the curriculum, the experience here? What is it that 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 you really feel that green school is providing in terms of education and experience? I think the first thing is that I've never seen my boys happier. That spark and, and curiosity to really want to learn rather than just going to school because they've got to take a test or be assessed and come up with a number in two years and then make a, a firm decision on what university they want to go to, which could be one of their options. Um, I also think that, uh, you know, the core subjects, the math, the science, the English is very rigorous, but actually they bring it to life. Whether it's the science, they're working on real life experiments. It's not just learning from a textbook, it's experiential. Uh, literacy, it's embedded in local culture as well, and also world issues. They're having really interesting conversations with their teachers because the, there's a really wonderful chemistry between the teachers that they really inspire the students to want to learn and be open and share their thoughts and come together with the class as well. Um, they they have a wonderful program on a Wednesday morning uh, across middle school and upper school, Jalan Jalan. There's options such as bamboo bike making, coral restoration. Um, what did you do, actually? I did all of those. <laughs> did you? <Yeah. laughs> and uh, so that's Wednesday morning off campus, real life learning, you know? It's not just in these beautiful classrooms. So that was tremendous. I think actually one anecdote from my son, who's in year 12 now, is that his first week at Green School, he said, Mum, what am I going to do? I don't think two years is going to be long enough. He really thrived from the first moment he came here because it's so welcoming and um, students from all across the world, which make it such a diverse, vibrant community. Yeah. Thanks, Nikki. So before we continue talking to Nikki and Freddie, I just want to remind everyone that you can put questions into the chat and I will get them here on my iPad. So that's an option for you to ask any questions directly to Nikki and Freddie that you might be curious around in terms of what they're speaking to, specifically about our high school experience. So please do share any questions you have and I can make sure to pass them on to Nikki and Freddie. So one thing that I'd like us to talk a little bit about is 
um, how the community becomes a part of our high school program. So one of the things that we do here at Green School is that we try to instill uh, mentorships and we involve parents as well in some of the projects we are doing. So Freddie, can you talk about how that had made an impact for you in terms of uh, the projects you've done in high school yeah. and in specific the, the, the grade 12 project you, mm. you started about a year ago? Yeah. So one of the biggest things at Green School uh, is the capstone projects that student do, students do when they graduate from a learning neighborhood. So that's, that's early years, middle school and high school. And so the biggest project you do uh, in your Green School career is called Greenstone, which is when you graduate, um, where students are given a year to sort of go off on their own, start a project, have a real impact, and then present it at a TEDx style event in front of hundreds of people, uh, which is nerve wracking. Um, and then, uh, and then that's sort of how you finish up your green school program, and uh, and my project uh, became a real company, uh, and is now incorporated in, in multiple countries and operating mostly in Indonesia, um, and those parent connections were this cornerstone of, of my project, right? So very early on, I pitched it to uh, an exited founder of his own startup who moved here with his family. Um, he initially moved here for one year and has now been here for six years with his kids. Um, so this is a very common thing. When you move here, you think you're going to be here for six months, 12 months, 18 months. In the end, you're here for 10 years. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a true story for us as well. Um, and so those parent connections and having those mentorships is a huge part of especially the high school program. Um, and I found that by far the, the, the most meaningful learning to me as a student was the hands-on learning that I got through my project, through these mentorship connections and, 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 uh, and through Luke, who I work with. Um, yeah. What's your company called? Can we put a... Yeah, a, put, a, should, put a link in the... Put a in link the, in the chat. In the chat if you want. It's uh, dungbeetle.io. And dungbeetle is a, the, the best name for a startup you've ever heard. Yes. And it's the little <laughs> little beetle that pushes feces uphill all day. Um, and we that's an, that's our analogy for, for the eco-warriors we work with. Um, so we work with small eco uh, startups that, uh, that uh, keep on pushing to, to, to help fight the climate crisis. Great. Thanks, Fred. So... What Freddie is speaking to now is how mentors and parents can be involved in some of the projects and learning opportunities that, that students can embark in here on, on Green School. So, Nikki, I know that your boys are also taking part in a class which has to do with architecture, where another parent, Jonathan, who is an architect, is a part of making sure that they get real life experience in terms of what architecture can do. So could, could you speak a little to what, what their experience is and what, what is they're doing? Yes, yes. So, just rewinding, um, parents are so welcomed at Green School. We have a specific space that parents meet, also students come in as well and present, and there's always something going on every day. Presentations, um, parents can actually suggest ideas, so you're very, very welcomed through the, the bamboo gates. And so how these, these relationships are sparked is, as Freddie said, you know, the green stones are presented to parents. Um, however, the, the specific project you're talking about uh, was initiated by, by Jonathan. Um, he's a biophilic architect. He was incredibly inspired by this campus and then started looking at the structure of, of the bridge and where all these events are held and parents connect and collaborate and thought, actually, maybe we need some Zoom booths because parents wanted to work in a quieter space. And then he started talking to a student and then started talking to the founder of the bridge, who was a parent, and then sort of started to speaking to the head of high school. So this snowball effect, not like the dung beetle, but this <laughs> snowballing really took off so that right now uh, the students in high school from grades 9 to 12 are working with professionals within the classroom. They're working with Pakantara, who is our building expert. He's just joined the project. They're working with parents who are interior designers. They are working with an architectural specialist who works um, across the world. And so it's extraordinary how this project has mushroomed. Mm. Um, it's activating learning from the students. But what, what we saw in the class this morning, because it just happened, is that the students are teaching other students, which is incredible. So the year 12 students are teaching the year nine students how to create a film. Um, the interiors experts are working together with students and they're all teaching each other. They're teaching each other film programs or 3D design programs. So this, this learning is such a thriving hotbed of, of um, 
integrating learning, um, not just from experiential, but also activating every member of the community. It's absolutely extraordinary and bringing this real, real life project to life. So yeah, really excited about that. Yeah. Thanks, Nikki. So um, one of the questions we are getting out there from the audience has to do with what are green school students doing after graduating green school? Where are they going? What type of universities are they going into? What kind of career paths are they taking? So um, we have some comments around that that Sal and I will also join in on. But Freddie, I know that you graduated in June. So could you give some examples of where where have your friends gone and where in the world are they and what what are they up to? So I think one of the most beautiful things about Green School is how many different and uh, diverse places that alumni go to. So many of my personal friends are taking gap years where they're traveling the world and then going to universities. Um, a lot of my friends have gone to directly to uni, especially in the US, there are many good ones. Um, I got a scholarship to a, to a university in the UK and deferred it to run my little eco business. Um, and so I think one of the really cool things at Green School is you get that opportunity uh, and, the, and the wider perspective to allow yourself to say, you know what, I'm going to go off on a year uh, and have an experience to get some hands on experience, learn what it's like to run a business, learn what it's like to, you know, have an internship in a bigger business, whatever it is you want to do, travel the world, and then I'm going to go to university. Uh, in fact, I remember we, 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 had a, we had a really cool history teacher at Green School called Pak Tom at one point, and he used to manage the Red Hot Chili Peppers tours. So he's a pretty cool guy. Um, one of my favorite teachers I've ever had at Green School. And he used to tell me, Freddie, the most boring people I've ever met are the ones that go straight through university, straight through to their PhDs, <laughs> and never travel the world, never do anything. So do all those things you want to do. And I was like, hmm, okay, maybe... Maybe there's something true about it. If if this history teacher is telling me to go off and travel the world, then you know it must be true that that that's a cool thing to do. <laughs> Thanks. So I want to just make sure that we also share a, a resource with you. Maybe the team can help put this into the chat. That uh, we we have a, an area on our website which is speaking to where our graduating students have gone meaning what types of universities have they been admitted into. So it's basically a, a map of the world where you can see uh, which places and which institutions have our graduating students been able to join in the past years. So we can just share that in the chat with you so you can have a little glance at that as well. Um, one thing we we also get in questions around here is how how are we talking to our young people during the high school experience about finding their passion and finding their pathway i mean many young students don't necessarily know what what they want to be when they grow up uh, there's uh, a lot of opportunities out there so we have a pathway advisor here at green school and, and nikki could you speak a little to you know what it is he's doing and, and how we ex try to explore that as a part of our high school program to make sure that, that young people follow their passions. Yes, certainly. So Pak Jim, our Pathways and Careers Counselor, doesn't just start talking to students in their final year as to what grades are you getting, what university are you going to, what, what's going to be your career, are you on track? It's not just that conversation. Pak Jim is really guiding and giving, you know, um, very expert advice on what is required should you wish to follow the pathway of university. Also, he's running events. We recently had a university fair here as well. But I think just after the morning session we had, Freddie, we were talking about green school students really differentiate themselves. It's not just the qualification they come out with. It's, it's the real life learning skills, the fact that they're working in real life situations that you are with professionals now, um, that that um, also when the universities came to Green School, they had a session afterwards and they were really, really astounded as to how confidently the Green School students were able to present. But also they they said, you know, th this is this is like going into university and, and talking to first year university students. They have the confidence, they have the skills, but there's something special about them, not just, okay, you've submitted your application. So it, it's really, uh, it's really quite remarkable that, you know, that is now being really understood by universities and also other schools as to, it's not enough just to to uh, get your grades and uh, apply to the universities. It's what differentiates you. And I, I really truly believe that's what, why my two sons are here. And that's why we all 
love being here, really. Um, yeah. Freddie, do, do you have anything else to say on that? No, I, I, I completely agree. I think one of the, one of the big questions that, that many parents have in their minds, and also students, especially if they're going in and starting high school, um, is what opportunities will I have after I finish green school, right? What, what opportunities will I have in terms of going to university? Since the green school diploma isn't IB, is it, you know, is it gonna, go, gonna get me where I wanna go? Um, and I see it over and over again, the, the concern being raised, and I see it being sort of debunked over and over again. Um, and my theory is it's because almost every single green school student has a unique thing they can put on their, on their diploma, on their CV, in their essays, whether it's going to remote parts of Indonesia and doing community service for vulnerable communities or uh, starting a project to build the first ever mycelium-based surfboard mm -hmm. or uh, starting a small eco startup or whatever it is. Um, and, and, you know, Nikki and I were talking about most IB applicants um, look really similar on paper. Green school students don't. And so actually, in many cases, having that green school diploma and CV is a huge advantage. Um, yeah. More and more of our students are getting scholarships, full scholarships uh, around the world because of that unique selling point yeah. that, that we create. Not a selling point, but yeah. I think if you standardize a curriculum and standardize assessment, you're going to get a standard type of outcome, mm. aren't you? So when we've gone the opposite way and open the options to student-centered and to passions and to activated learning, we're able to see students actually who they really are and that's able to be presented as they move out of green school too. Mm. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it is a really cool thing. I think universities are changing. They're starting to realize that it can't just be all about a number. And a lot of universities are coming to us now. So rather than our students shopping for universities, universities are shopping for green school students. That's a really cool thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we we have a question here from from some of the viewers, Sal, that speaks to how our program is accredited and how it's translated by mm -hmm. universities. Mm -hmm. Is that maybe something you can just speak to, so yeah. people are aware? You know, what yeah. what is the scaffolding we have around our curriculum at, at our high school? Yeah, we have there's three major types of international accreditation. Uh, we've got one of them. It's called WASC, Western Association of Schools and Colleges. Uh, it's based in the states. Um, we're nearly through the first six years of that. Uh, we did our mid-year uh, accreditation last year. Uh, to be an international school, we're also accredited by uh, the Indonesian uh, SPK schools, um, and that's quite a rigorous um, process. Uh, the other thing is, in terms of who we are as a school and our learning programs, they're also being audited and accredited really by our, our parent company, which is Education in Motion. They're formerly Dulwich International Colleges. They have different uh, schools, uh, groups around the world. And so they've uh, recently been a part of Green School and they've had a good look at what we do as well. So when you come through a universe, uh, through school, uh, Green School and you graduate at grade 12, you do leave with what is uh, a diploma which is very similar to an American high school diploma. It's based on Carnegie Point system. It's got a, a, certain, a certain number of credits and et cetera, et cetera. But our students also have the option to leave with uh, quite amazing e-portfolios. Um, at their TED type uh, talk, their passion project, their Greenstone. Sometimes if they've come through middle school as well, they'll have a quest and a Greenstone video that shows who, the world who they are as a person and as a learner and what they've been able to do already um, with their learning. Because, you know, I don't, I don't know, but for you and for me, it was probably just pass an exam with your learning. But we've been able to provide opportunities for students to demonstrate what they've learned and to, to, for them to have an impact with it. Our students uh, from 50 different countries at the moment, 52 I think, um, no school in the world can promise any family or any student to get straight into a university. That's not something that any schools do. But what we do do, because probably of our small numbers in high school, there were 20, 19, 20 graduates from last year, able to really personalise that experience and, and, and set students up for whatever pathway they're, they're, they're interested in afterwards. And a lot of times that's university and other times it's become a CEO of your own startup or another time it's, it's take a gap year and defer. Um, many different pathways for many different people, but we don't want to do standardized school anymore because uh, we're not living in a standardized world. Mm. Thank you so much, Sal. So, Freddie and Nikki, I wanted to just, you know, end our little chat in the jungle here by asking you for any final comment or advice you have to our viewers, the families that are sitting out there in the same situation that you encountered with your families when you were thinking about potentially going to green school. So. 
Uh, do you have any advice for them? Anything that you'd like to share? Um, then please. Yes, yes, I'll start. Um, I would say when your children come home this afternoon, have a conversation with them and ask them about what they did. They may not answer about what, how their day at school was, but at whatever age, are they coming home passionate about learning? Are they enthusiastic? Do they want to go back and learn more? Are they, have they got a teacher or teachers? Actually, there are no teachers that don't truly inspire each of our young people um, who are here. Um, and um, really think about, is that the education that you want for your child? Um, that they want to remain a, a lifelong curious learner and really be inspired to know themselves and follow their passions and interests, which you're able to do even at the high school level. And um, yeah, take on that adventure as a family because it's not just for the children. It is incredible being a parent here as well. I think there's so many parents who who just, you know, are so inspired by by all the learning that's going on with their students uh, that they they want to have a part of it themselves. And that's possible through the learning experiences through the bridge for the parents and also mentorship and things like that. So it really is for the whole family and it's just such a beautiful place to be in as well. The Balinese are so welcoming. You learn the language, you're totally immersed. Green School makes it easy for you and um, just, yeah, it, it's life-changing. Thanks. Freddie, any final remarks from your side? Yes. Uh, my piece of advice would be to take Nikki's advice. Um, <laughs> it, I've, I've gone to four different schools in my life. Uh, IB schools, private schools, public schools, uh, and then green schools. So I sort of have the full spectrum of what it's like to, to try a little bit of everything. And the most happy I've ever been was by far at green school. Uh, And I think it's really because of the passion-based learning that, that is here. Like no matter uh, whether it's a, a student project that you initiate on your own or whether it's in maths class or literacy class, um, it's more engaging, it's more personalized. Um, and when you like the things you're learning, you learn a lot more and you work a lot harder. Um, and so that was yeah, it's a good piece of advice, Nikki. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining to both of you. Yeah, it's a pleasure. I wanna, yeah, I want to say thanks too. Had a yeah. wow moment this morning. Um, had a wow moment this afternoon too. Yeah, um, yeah, inspiring to me. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you for having us. Um, yeah, thanks. So um, we have a little bit more time to have just a, a couple of more Q and A. So Sal and I will try to address some of the. I call this section the hot seat section. Yeah, exactly. Where, so where I, I, I'm going to um, and throw you a couple of questions yeah. and maybe answer one or two myself. So uh, we have a question here regarding our bio bus. Um, does that take children to and from their home address? Uh, or what is, the, yeah. what is the deal? What is the plan there, with the bio There are bus? different parts of Bali that are probably uh, more popular to live in. Um, there's definitely more and more people living around the school in the Shibung village. Uh, they don't need to get the bio bus. A uh, significant portion of the community live in Changu, which is uh, the southwest coast of, uh, of Bali. Very popular, good surfing, lots of restaurants and stuff. So it really depends on where the school community is. I know that I think there's two buses that come from that Changu area. There's another bus that goes, uh, still a lot of people living in Ubud. It sort of depends. It's probably not a door to door, but it's pretty close. And we try to Uh, design those uh, those routes year to year depending on where people are. Normally it's a couple of minutes probably from your house if you're in the Changu area to the closest bio bus stop. Yeah, mm. thanks Sal. So we, we have a question here regarding transition because one thing is uh, what we've spoken to already today, what it's like transitioning into green school and joining the green school experience. But this family is also curious about What does it what does it mean moving back to their home country in this case Europe mm. and how would that transition typically go also in terms of transitioning back to a more traditional school system? Yeah, you know I think that's that's a really really good question and a lot of the time um, it, it's happened with me personally in my life where I was you know more culture shocked coming home after a time away from home than I was when I went out uh, into into the wide world. Um, you know, a, a personal story, you know, my son, uh, he's in grade 10 now. Uh, during COVID, um, I sent him to New Zealand where his mother lives because uh, I wasn't really sure what was going to happen in, in Bali at the very start of it. Uh, short story, long, long story short, he got locked into to New Zealand and he had to start attending a local school there. He was really scared about um, his academic learning. 
He was anxious, he was worried, he knew he had a maths test on that first day for replacement to see what grade he was in. Little did he know, and to his pleasant surprise, that he was one of the top maths students there. It's important to know that I think uh, the transition out of green school, you're not going to be behind in any academic learning. Uh, if you're uh, an amazing math student, you love it and everything. We can always provide extension and keep you growing and learning uh, to your rate. Um, we've had so many success stories, um, happy stories about people and families leaving green school and going back to their home country. I think if anything, you know, the academic side of it is there, but that personal growth, the things that you see in uh, Freddie, our alumni student there, uh, the comments from Nikki about, you know, those those really important um, human skills uh, that, that students develop here. I think they put our students, when they go home to their home country, they put them in front of, of um, probably the people that they'd left behind. Yeah. yeah. When you learn skills and values and you can activate your learning and you become an active communicator and a problem solver and you're aware of yourself and the environment and you know what you want and you can activate your passions, uh, you know, that's pretty special and I don't think a lot of schools are able to give that to students. Mm -hmm. Normally too, just one more thing, sure. you know, that's normally uh, from your perspective sitting at home now, you're thinking, you know, after one year, what are we going to be like? But just be aware that that one year often turns into two and three and four. Uh, there are so many people that come here for one year. Um, I had a two year plan that could have been five and I've been here for 10. And I think that's pretty popular that um, a lot of people think, oh, we'll just go and have a little experience and we'll be right when we come home. That does happen. But then a lot of times those stays do extend quite significantly. Yeah. Mm. And for those of you watching closely, you can see some of our young mud wrestling students coming back from their duties in the jungle in the background. They are definitely going in for a um, detergent moment when they come home, yeah. that's for sure. It's called Mapantigon actually, it's an ex-Green School family. Um, two of the students have been here, they were uh, local scholars. Uh, really connected, it's not just mud wrestling, there's a whole heap of culture and dance and they um, and a dog just walked across in front of the screen. I don't know if you saw that, but welcome to Green School. But yeah, the Mapantagon is traditional Balinese art and dance and, and a bit of wrestling in the mud. Um, yeah. And bow and arrows, I can see. Yeah. So. so we have one more question here, which is about assessment especially around skills and value. So we've spoken about high school a great deal today, but this is actually something we do across our learning program that we provide feedback every term. Could you speak a little bit about, you know, the reflection papers we provide yeah. at the yeah. end of each term? So every three months. Yeah. yeah, so when you're designing a learning program that uh, has strong academics, but good skills and values based opportunities, when there's projects uh, embedded in them, and remember, a project always doesn't have to succeed to be a success. You know, failure has to be one of those success criteria. When you do that, you need to start thinking really creatively and holistically around assessment. So assessment isn't really just learning one thing and then doing an exam at the end of it. That sort of worked for me. I was great at taking tests and passing exams, swatting up the night before, um, getting a good mark, but it doesn't work for everyone. We also don't think it provides an accurate assessment of learning. So assessment is formative and summative. So that means it's happening across the learning journey and there are points at the end which we do ask for different types of assessment. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer assessment is, is a part of that. Student self-assessment is a part of it and part of the way that we create reports here where students actually write about their own learning themselves, what they found challenging, how they uh, overcame those challenges, what things they learned before the class that they could use in the class, what things they learned in the class that they know that they can use in the future. So peer-to-peer, self-assessment, different uh, types of assessment rubrics, uh, different ways that teachers can feedback things. I know in high school, our assessment runs every two weeks. So they do get a report at the end of the term, but every two weeks, uh, teachers are adding comments to our, our um, online system that allows students to see their growth and parents to actually access real-time assessment rather than waiting for, for the end of uh, the unit when the unit's finished to get assessed on it. Uh, we do have formal quizzes. Uh, our high school students do do uh, some tests, some exams, um, but there is homework. Uh, sometimes in middle school and a lot of times I've got a high school kid myself and a lot of times in high school there are normal things like that that we need to do. We have student reports, they look quite differently and for us assessment does need to look differently because the learning experiences that we create is different. Yeah. Thank you so much Sal. So 
I have a couple of questions here that I'd like also for the team to just share a couple of resources in the chat here. We have one question regarding visas for students and parents. Um, so that's a good thing to start to consider to prepare two to three months before coming to Green School Bali, that there is a process for applying for a, a visa or a kitas as it's called here in Indonesia. So uh, all the students will be on a student kitas. So that's fairly simple. For adults, there's an, a couple of options in terms of what type of visa you, you would like to apply for. It depends on whether you plan to work in Indonesia or you're staying here uh, as a family. Uh, and we have a, um, a partner agency called Ganesha who is actually situated here on campus, who have uh, a lot of competence in helping with the visa and KITAS applications for, I think they help around 90% of our incoming families, making sure that the visa situation is sorted in a good way before arrival. So <clears throat> the team will just share a link with you uh, for the Ganesha office, and you feel free to reach out to them for, for any questions when you, when you come to uh, the visa process, which is something you should consider like two to three months before before joining our program. You could look at it a different way. I know it's late in the afternoon, but my crazy brains, if you wanted just to move to Bali, yep. an easy way to do would be to join Green School because from visas to uh, how to get here and where to live, um, what to buy, what you need, uh, this community is set up over 15 years to help people move to Bali to be a part of this community. So it's not something that you're on your own with getting a visa or understanding how to get there or where to live and those sorts of things. You know, we're a community, you're doing more than just enrolling your kids in a school, you're joining a community that really cares for you. Hmm? Yeah. Um, so we have one more question here about um, digital nomads and you can also say family constellations. I mean, Sal already mentioned we have right now a bit more than 500 students here at Green School. We have 52 different nationalities, so a bigger diversity in terms of culture and background and nationality than ever before. Um, we have many different family constellations here at Green School. Uh, some parents come here for a sabbatical, some are working remotely, uh, some families might choose to have one parent working uh, somewhere, it could be Singapore, Tokyo, going back and forth. So there's many different ways of trying to get your work-life balance uh, in, in, in a good manner, uh, in a good, uh, organized in a good way when, when coming to a green school. So yes, uh, there are a lot of digital nomad families here, uh, families that might change uh, their occupation, who are working remotely or who are taking a sabbatical. You, you see many different family patterns amongst our parent community. Although there is a minimum enrolment, you know, so the digital nomad thing is very popular here. Uh, it's changing probably after COVID, I think more and more people are thinking and open to the idea of living in a different country and kids going to different schools. Um, it's, I think it's a, it's a benefit, it's an opportunity for us. Um, we love having the parents around and as Ni uh, Nikki was talking before, just accessing that uh, wealth of knowledge and embedding that into the learning program is really special for us. Um, but you, we do, you know, there's a minimum one year enrollment. It's two years for grade 11 and 12. You can get all that sort of logistical admin information uh, from the admissions team later on. Yeah. Mm. So we're coming close to the end of our session. We do have a couple of more uh, uh, inputs before we, we close it today. So one important thing that I'd like to remind you is to help us improve these virtual open days. We are sharing a survey link with you in the chat now. So please spend a couple of minutes after the call is closing to give us some feedback. And if there's any additional information you'd like, you're more than welcome to reach out to us on uh, via some of the resources that we will share afterwards. Uh, we will also send you a follow-up email uh, including uh, links to relevant areas, how to get in touch with our admissions team and how to potentially start an application with us. So just to give you a little bit of a peace of mind, yes, we are still accepting and reviewing applications for the August 24 intake. We have already allocated some spaces and sent out offers, so the uh, vacancies are now very limited. We are of course trying to make sure that we give parents a lot of time in advance to plan their move to to Bali so we try to release places as early as we can and of course we also have a really high retention rate so a lot of our families as you heard they might plan to come for one year but end up staying for 10 so the turnover is quite limited as well so if you're looking for the August intake please make sure hi guys <laughs> it's okay 
uh, please do make sure that you uh, submit your application as soon as possible and that we are um, uh, yeah to complete the process I think you saw the video just then to which walked you through the process itself as well so to make sure that you submit your full application as soon as you can if you have any questions about the application process of course you can always reach out to us as well so that really finalizes our um, virtual open day today as you can see we still have a couple of students on our campus um, thank you so much for your contributions for all your really interesting questions that always makes the the virtual open days unique um, each time because we get to engage with you um, I always offer at this stage as well, if you have any further questions and like to have a chat with me directly or anybody of, of the team, feel free to email. I am happy to do a Zoom call. If you're in Bali already, happy to do a meet as well. So you can always reach out to us via email and we can get that organized. Thank you so much for your time.